Ministry.com. Welcome to the Let's Talk Bling podcast. This is episode five, where we're going to break down the age-old question, is gold jewelry a good investment? Now, normally you guys sit me, you guys watch me sit next to someone on a couch and talk to them, and I have a guest and I ask them questions, etc. But this this podcast is not going to be like that. This one is going to be just me explaining something because I needed to dedicate a full hour to explaining and fully letting you guys know how the jewelry uh, business works. Is gold jewelry an actually good investment because it gets repeated a million times? And is it something that you want to invest your money in? So I'm going to give you my perspective on it. I'm going to give you a bunch of interesting interesting facts about it. Uh, so without further ado, let's get this podcast started. Hit the world or <laughs> start the music creepy. <laughs> let's go. I, I can't swing my arm with this one, man. Hit the fire. I can hit myself. <laughs> All right, so uh, you know you get it, you get it repeated a bunch of times, right? You you're hearing it all over the place. Every jewelry uh, commercial you'll probably ever see, and they'll repeat it a million times. Is uh, it, oh, this is a good investment, or you know, like oh my, you know, gold is a good investment, and or someone will be like, oh, you spent thirty five thousand dollars on this chain, and they'll be like, oh, well, it's gold, it's a good investment, and whatever, and. If you want to skip through the whole entire process and get the easy answer, the answer is no. No, gold is not a good investment um, as far as jewelry wise. And I'll break down to you the reason why. Number one, let's talk about how gold is traded on an everyday basis. Gold is a commodity that gets traded uh, globally. There's the London uh, exchange that pretty much dictates uh, what the price of gold is going to be everywhere. And that is uh, something that's traded on a daily basis. And so if you guys download the app Kitco, which I've mentioned in a previous video, it's an app where you can actually see the live trading price of gold as you uh, you know, eat your dinner throughout the whole entire day. It's live, right? And so gold in and of itself is not that volatile. In other words, it doesn't fluctuate up and down as crazy as you would see another stock. Let's say, for instance, I don't know, whatever, just throwing something out there, T-Mobile, I don't know. Um, the point is, it's not so volatile. So it's going to have a steady increase, right? And then when it decreases, of course, it does as well. Now, are there days out there where gold goes up $100 an ounce? Yeah, of course there are, just like anything else that gets traded. But for the most part, you can pretty much see the trends, right? And now what happens with gold specifically is that it's a direct, uh, it has a direct impact on the global economy or big economies, whether it be China, Russia, the US, etc. And anything that causes any sort of instability within that economy um, people tend to invest in gold rather than keeping cash or, or bonds or or stocks or whatever it is. They'll, they'll rather have something physical that they can hold on to. So as an example, uh, you know, a couple of, you know, we're all well aware of the, the world events that are happening around us. Uh, a year ago when, you know, there was the whole Russian-Ukraine war, it, gold would go up. Or if there was a pandemic, when the pandemic started, uh, gold went up. Uh, if there's a bank financial crisis, like it happened a couple of months ago or a month ago or however long it was, gold goes up. So these things are direct uh, reactor or gold is a direct reactor of what's happening around us. It's a reflection of what's happening around us. Now, for the most part, you know, day in, day out, you look at a chart of gold from, let's say, for instance, the 60s to the 80s, it's always going to have a trend up. It goes up with uh, not only the inflation, but just uh, it, it, it's going to grab value over time. Now, the part that's kind of frustrating is how people tie that or the jewelry industry ties that into uh, trying to use it as a marketing scheme to get people to buy gold, thinking that it is some sort of smart investment, right? And that's where I have the issue with, and here's why I'm going to tell you that it's not, right? Gold jewelry for the most part, and jewelers like myself, jewelers like anyone that you're going to sit there and talk to or go see at a store or on YouTube or wherever the hell it is, we are in the industry of making money right? We're not here. This isn't Camilla's house. This isn't giving away, you know, free money to everybody else. This isn't charity work. We are in the industry of making money. 
And to make money, you have to charge premiums for things that you buy. So in other words, whatever I buy, this is basic capitalism. Whatever I buy, I'm going to sell for a higher profit. And I'm going to put that profit in my pocket. Gold jewelry in, in general is a very profitable business. If you do it correctly, also could be, you know, you could lose thousands of dollars. But for the most part, if you do uh, jewelry or jeweler or, or buy or sell jewelry, whatever it is that you do um, within the jewelry business, it's a very profitable business, right? So what happens with gold in general? Let's say, for instance, you were to buy a gold chain, and I'm going to use the gold chain reference many times in this podcast because it's the one that I'm most familiar with, but the margins are even bigger when it comes to individualized pieces of jewelry. But for the most part, let's stick to a chain which is sold at a per gram weight, okay? Okay. Most chains out there aren't sold as pieces of jewelry. They're sold per gram because it's about the weight of the chain. So let's use the example very briefly of a 100 gram chain, right? 100 grams. Now, right now, if you do the math on there, I'm going to put it up on the screen later on when I edit this. But let's say, for instance, we wanted to do a 100 gram chain. How much would it cost, right? Right now, the ounce is at 2011 uh, per ounce of fine gold. Now, what happens is that could fluctuate, but for all intents and purposes, let's just keep it at 2011. What it is today, and today is the 13th of May. Um, it is about three o'clock p.m. So that's what the ounce is at right now. And you guys can Google this. You don't have to, you know, you, this isn't rocket science. What I'm telling you guys you can easily just pull up Google and just Google the ounce of gold. But right now it's at 2011, right? So normally speaking, if we were going to buy 14, 18, 22 carat, even 10 carat, it doesn't really matter. Gold is going to be sold by the gram. So let's use 14 carat because it's the most widely bought uh, carat purity here in the U.S. It may be different from where you are, but for all intents and purposes right here, this is what it was going to be. If you're going to buy 14 carat and 100 grams, right now that's a pretty thin chain. So it's going to be usually sold anywhere from about 44 to $48. Now let's just talk about it as if it were the $44 a gram, right? We're not, we're just going to, you got a deal on it. It's $44 a gram. Awesome. So for all intents and purposes, that 100 gram chain, the retail value on that is $4,400 because a hundred times, uh, you know, 44 is 4,400. So you're talking about $4,400. Now let's calculate how much in gold, in fine gold, there is in that chain mixture, right? So for right now, it's going to be 100 grams, right? We're going to multiply it because all we're trying to do in that 100 gram mixture, think of it as a bar, in this case, it's a chain, but think of it as a bar, is we're just trying to find how much fine gold because I don't care about the alloy mix, right? The other, however much percent, 41.7%, we don't care about that. that. That's alloy, that's different, other, other different types of metals that are pretty much worthless. All we're trying to find out is how much gold is in there. So in a 100 gram chain, you would multiply that by 0.583, which is the purity of 14 carat. It's 58.3% pure. So at that point, you're talking about 58.3 grams of fine gold, right? That's how much that is right there. And then what you do is just simply grab and divide that by the ounce. So how many ounces is 58.3 ounces? Very simple because we're trying to find how many ounces is 58.3, right? So you divide that in, in, in troy ounces, it's 31.10. So you would divide 58.3 grams by 31.10, which is one ounce. And you're going to see that it's 1.87 ounces of fine gold. And then you just multiply that by whatever the number Google is telling you that the ounce price is at right now, right? So 2011. Right now, you're talking about 37.69. That's how much actual fine gold value is in that chain, okay? Now, you just paid $4,400. So the jeweler and the person who made the chain, et cetera, et cetera, made $630 in profit. Now, that's the simplest way of putting it, but ultimately it's a little bit more complex than that because the jeweler just doesn't pocket 630 bucks. They have to pay an overhead. They have to pay materials. They have to pay someone usually to make it. If they make it themselves, they got to pay payroll. They got to, they got to do a bunch of stuff. So, but $631 is the premium that you paid to make that hundred gram chain, right? So what happens when people say, is gold a good investment? If you look at the trends of gold for you to 
make any sort of investment, whether it's gold, whether it's any stock, an investment in simplest and basic terms is you're going to buy something and I'm going to put an X amount of money into it. And then over time with, you know, whatever it is, and of course, this is a very simple way of explaining it, but over time, that is going to give you return on investment, also known as ROI. And it's going to give you a positive return on investment. So in other words, if I put in $100 and I got back 120 bucks, then I made 20%, right? Very simple. So you want some sort of return on investment. Now, a good investment is anything from about six to seven percent, because that's what you know the index is going to give you over time. The, the New York Stock Exchange, if you just dump a hundred thousand dollars on there, outside of that, a really good investment you're talking about 10, 15 percent. Outstanding investments, you're talking about 20 to 30 percent, right? A bad investment is something that you put in a hundred dollars and you didn't get even back your money, you lost money on that. So, is gold jewelry in this particular case a chain a good investment? If that were the case, right, you would have to make of the $4,400 that you spend and the $36 some hundred dollars that, that it actually costs to make the gold in it, you would have to wait for the ounce of gold to go up exponentially before you were to make back at the very least just your money. In other words, the $4,400 that you paid for that chain is the exact amount of money that it's now valued at which means that would be a zero investment. So you invested $4,400 and now the chain is worth $4,400. For it to be a quote unquote good investment, those $4,400 would have to be returned back to you. In other words, the chain would have to be now be valued more than $4,400. And it would have to be done in a reasonable amount of time. Right. Because, yeah, you could say like it was a good investment for me to buy a pair of shoes that were 100 bucks and I waited 40 something years. Right. And now they just happen to be some exclusive Jordans that I didn't even know about. And now they're worth five thousand. Yeah, technically, that was a good investment. But you had to wait 44 years for that. Right. And you could have probably done a lot more things than the 200 bucks you spent on those shoes back in the 80s. It's a wild example and it's not realistic. I get that. But the point I'm trying to make is that. There are much better things that you could spend your money on than than something that's going to take you that long. So again, back to the chain, forty four hundred dollars for you to to actually make money back on that for it to be a good investment. The trends of gold would absolutely have to change, right? It ha it would have to be a lot more volatile, and it would have to be it would have to increase at a higher rate than it's increasing right now. To, to put it into context, my father came to the U.S. when in back in the 80s. And back in the 80s, something like that, the ounce of gold was practically nothing, right? You could buy gold and gold chains and all that stuff uh, relatively inexpensive. Like, you know, you can get by a chain for 180 bucks that now would cost you $5,000. So it, it, the event of a, of a good investment buying something in gold right now, you would have to buy it right now and hope and hold on to that and 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 hopefully pray that gold is going to go all the way up and make you money in 30 or 40 years right so the the thought of people saying that gold jewelry is a good investment is just wrong because number 1 the premium that you pay for that jewelry is huge number 2 the trend of which gold is at, in which you would have to get to at least break even, is very long. And even if it does, because eventually it will be worth more than the $600 premium that you put there, but it's going to take about 20, 30 years. I mean, no one really knows the truth, but just following the trends, that's more than likely what it's going to be. So you're talking about not at, at the very least breaking even and this being something that's going to take you 15 to 20 years. Now, here is what gold jewelry is, right? And this is a fact. Gold jewelry has value because gold has value. So think of gold jewelry not as an investment at all. Think of gold jewelry as a savings account because ultimately that's what it is. Now, the reality of it is gold jewelry right now, specifically right now, is very much so in demand and it's never been more popular. Cuban chains, uh, you know, ice style chains, all that stuff, it's always been popular, but now with pop culture and the, and social media, you know, jewelers are, are, it's a lot easier to push your jewelry or to sell jewelry now, today's age, than it was, let's say, for instance, 40 or 30 years ago, right? So 
gold specifically is always going to be in demand. And because gold has a value to it, whenever you do buy a chain, that percentage of gold that you have in that mixture, unless you buy pure 24 karat, is still always going to have a value, right? Now, here's the reason why it's always it's it's like a savings account. Because let's say for that for that same 100 gram chain that you bought, you have it worn on and let's say, for instance, you ever get in a jam and you need to bail yourself out with some sort of money. You can go to any single jeweler out there or jewelry store that buys gold, go up to them and sell that piece of jewelry. No matter what time, no matter how bad things are, even when the pandemic was going on and people were just panicking all over the places and things were shutting down. I'm talking about in the very early stages of the pandemic, people would go to the jewelry stores and pull out cash and sell their gold. Like it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, outside of some like doomsday type of scenario, uh, it doesn't really matter. People are always going to pay cash for your gold. That's just the reality of it. So it's more, think of it more as a savings account, right? Now, if you make a little money on that savings account, so in other words, if gold keeps going up and now it's at $2,200 an ounce or whatever it is, and those same $3,600, $3,700 that you spent are now $3,800 or $3,900 and you made a little bit of money on that, great. That's awesome. You know what I mean? But think of it more as a savings account because that's truly what it is. It's something that you can wear on yourself that is going to be like that you could wear and have value that if you ever needed to get out of a jam or or go somewhere and needed money on the spot someone's always going to give you cash for it so uh, again it's not an investment it's more of a savings account it's something where that you can wear that's aesthetically pleasing i mean think about how many things are out there that you wear that automatically devalue right? Like you can buy a Gucci shirt for 600, 700 bucks, but when you go to resell that, not everyone is going to give you that kind of money back for it, right? And then especially if you start wearing it on an everyday basis, like let's say for instance, a chain, you put a year of wear of nonstop wear into one Gucci shirt and it's going to be a dingy ass shirt, probably going to smell really bad and no one's going to give you any kind of money for it. That's the reality of it. So Gold chains, gold jewelry, gold anything is something that you can put on, wear every single day, and at the end of the day, and after a year, two years, you want to get rid of it, someone is still going to give you, at the very least, what the actual gold mixture inside that uh, chain is worth. Now, that is on a chains that are sold per gram. It changes a little bit when you start to sell things per uh, piece of jewelry. So in other words, bangles, uh, rings, uh, you know, whatever it is, diamonds and stuff like that. And diamonds is a completely different uh, subject that I'm going to make another podcast on. But let's say, for instance, rings or, or you know, a piece of, uh, you know, earrings that, that women wear. Earrings are probably eight or nine grams of gold, but they're not sold per gram. They're sold as actual pieces of jewelry. So they their premiums are, you know, what the actual value of gold is, is maybe, you know, 240 bucks, something like that. And then what you sell them for is like a thousand, right? And so you make, you know, the, the premium on that is like three, four, five times the value of gold. So those don't even have that much in your savings account because you don't even have that much weight. You know what I mean? Now, I know that there are people out there that say, hey, listen, you know, 18 carat, 22 carat and all that stuff. Those are better investments. But the reality is it's not because whenever you go and sell it to a jeweler, all we care about is the percentage of gold that's inside that mixture. That's it. There's some people that have told me, oh, well, you know, 10, 10K is like, it's not as valuable. It's like, it doesn't, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. All I'm buying is the 41.7% of gold, of fine gold that has, that's in that mixture. No matter what you buy, whether you buy 10 carat, 14, 18, or 22, it, what you're buying is just the fine gold that's inside that mixture. Now, are you paying a, pr a higher premium for 10 carat? Yeah, of course. So, same thing with 14, you know, 22 or 18. But it doesn't make it any less or more desirable to because it's a carat. All we're doing is putting in the calculation into a calculator and giving you what the what the percentage of fine gold in that mixture is. Okay? So... I know it was a fast podcast. I know we wrapped it up. I just wanted to give you guys that perspective of why, you know, jewelry in general, gold jewelry in general is not an actual, um, 
uh, investment. Uh, it's a short one this week. Uh, next week, we're going to have a guest on there who's actually been in the jewelry game, who also uh, sells, buys and sells watches. So, you know, uh, wait for that one. But uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. And if you guys have any questions, agree, don't agree, comment, whatever it is, shoot me a comment down below. If you're listening to this in the radio or whatever, you can shoot me a DM and tell me your opinion on it. But yeah, uh, love to hear from you guys. See you guys in the next one.